What's up everybody? Chris from Pro Photo here and today we're sideways. We're coming from the wide shot because I have a gigantic softbox where our normal main shot is. So welcome to Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about you know lighting gear, uh, tips, tricks, uh, anything photography related. If you guys have any questions, we can answer those here. Uh, feel free to drop anything that you want in the chat. We'll be more than happy to answer that. That being said, let's dive into what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about hard fill versus soft fill. It's a, I saw something recently where someone was saying, oh, you never want to use a hard fill for your fill light. And I started thinking about that. Uh, and I don't know that I 100% agree with that. I do understand what they were saying. So oh, wait, one, if you're using a hard light as your fill light uh, and your main light, your soft light, that could be a little, a little wonky. Uh, you, the shadows might not make a lot of sense, but uh, if you're using all hard light, first and foremost, I think it's totally fine. The things that you have to pay attention to are shadow placement, especially because you're going to start uh, with hard light. It's much easier to introduce shadows into the scene. So you could have, uh, and, and, and I'll show you whenever we're actually taking some photos here shortly. Uh, you can get some double shadows, maybe in some places that you don't want them. We're going to talk about uh, some techniques to control those. Uh, but then we're also going to compare uh, a hard fill shot uh, with a shot with a soft fill. So it should be pretty straightforward, pretty easy to digest. Uh, I think it's kind of an interesting topic to talk about. So uh, gear wise, what we're using uh, and granted, you don't have to be using a pro 10 or a pro 11. I just am because I can kind of have everything running off of one thing just for this uh, purpose. But I've got a Pro 11 uh, that's going to be running all of our fill flashes. Uh, one of the heads is a Pro head with a zoom to reflector on it. Uh, oh, sweet, you can see it in that shot. So it's a zoom to reflector on it. And then right behind that, uh, and you can slightly see that in the corner too, is a 4x6 RFI softbox. So those are what I'm using as my fill flash. Uh, and then as my main light, whenever we light Kate here in a second, I have the B10 uh, Plus or B10X Plus with OCF Magnum reflector. So, all in all, it's a relatively hard light image uh, portrait of Kate. So the, the main light is this right here. This is going to be broadcasting most of the light onto Kate. And then we're going to look at the different uh, fill light types uh, and see, you know, if there's anything that's unpleasant, things that you need to think about while you're using one versus the other. So it's a versus. So that's what we're doing. We're talking about why you'd go with one over the other. Uh, with that being said, does anybody have any questions so far? I see a couple of things pop up. Hey, everybody. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. So uh, camera-wise, because we always like to know camera stuff, and I'm also pretty jazzed about this, um, I, have, I have a new camera upgrade. Uh, camera-wise, we're shooting with a GFX 100S Fuji um, with my Kinect Pro for Fuji uh, and camera settings, 1 25th of a second, F8, ISO 100. Um, so, yeah. Just keeping all the, the the settings pretty the same. So let's jump in here first. I'm going to have Kate hop into the scene. And what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a series of images. So we're going to take an image of um, Kate with no fill light. Then we're going to take one with the soft fill, one with the hard fill. And then I'm also probably going to snap a couple of shots of just the fill light by themselves. So you can see uh, the things that you probably wouldn't see uh, when you are, it's awesome. I'm not even on the screen right now. Um, you, Where'd you go? Um, I'm back here in the shadows of the, the second camera, but, uh, that way you you can oh, see what right. the scene looks like with, uh, just the fill light. And that way you, uh, maybe a, the stuff that the main light drowns out, you can kind of start to pay attention a little bit to with that as well. So <laughs> cool. Hi everybody. Cool. Did you just uh, fix your hat? I did. I used them to. Yeah, to fix your, your hat. Yeah. I like that. It's very nice. It's very, it's a very nice technique. Great. All right. So let's turn on this. Let's turn off. No, that was just me firing up the, the trigger. So, ready? One, two, three, flash. All right, here we go. So this is this first shot that you're going to see pop up on the screen. Not the one that's there right now. Uh, the first shot you're going to see pop up on the screen is going to be no fill light whatsoever. Just the flash. So here we go. Three, two, one. Boom. So that's the that's the main light, the B10X Plus with the Magnum reflector. Really nice hard light. It's got a nice uh, snap to it. It's a nice punch. But what can happen, especially with some of the working distances that I'm at right now, where the lights, it's not super close to Kate, but it's close enough. 
uh, the, the light can fall off somewhere. It's probably what, six feet away? Six-ish. Yeah, six yeah. feet away. So uh, the light can fall off relatively fast and hard light can get a little contrasty. So we wanna add in some fill light to try to bring that back. So let's start first with the soft fill. So let's go here. And so we have the, the soft box fired up now. So you ready, Kate? So we go three, two, one. Perfect. And so that's gonna to start to fill in some of the shadows you're gonna see when the image changes here in just a moment, that the shadows come up, the contrast drops a little bit. It's nice, soft, uh, you can't really see, um, there, there's, all you saw was the, the darkness come up, right? There's, there's nothing else introduced into the scene other than a little bit of light to lift up the shadows. That's the beautiful thing about using a soft fill, uh, especially if something really, really large, is it's not, it's not very directional unless you point it in a direction and, and, and do a lot of feathering, but it's, it's really forgiving. It takes the shadows, it feathers them out, so you're not really getting uh, any extra light lines that you would get from hard light. So now let's flip this over into a hard light setup. So we're going to kill the soft box and we're going to bring up the, uh, the harder light setup. So can we really flat, fast flip over to uh, the wide shot? You know, let me just take the photo since you're already sitting there and then we'll do the wide shot. That way they can see back over here and I can show them kind of how I'm set up. So here we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. And so with the, the hard fill, and I think it's probably set a little bit higher power so you can see some of those shadows come up. Um, the hard fill, it does a really good job and the shot's really, really nice. And that's because I thought about the placement of my light. So if you look here, what you wanna try to do is try to keep the light as close as possible to the plane of, if you, if you wanna use a hard fill, you wanna try to keep the light as close as you can to the plane of the camera. So this is just slightly above, and that's obviously so when my, you know, my fat hand comes in here and I click this button, one, my hand shadow is not being broadcast and the camera shadow is not being broadcast. So we wanna keep it kind of just above line. And I would have used, um, so for anybody who saw like the thumbnail for the email that, emailer that we sent out, I actually had the camera in landscape mode and I used the A10 on top of the camera, and that did a really, really good job too. So if you're staying with your camera in more of a landscape mode, you could do this with uh, an A10 uh, on top of the camera. What's up? Oh, oh, you shifted me, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. You're blurry. Oh, gotcha. Oh, gotcha, I'm all dark and shadow. So uh, with, the, with the wider thumbnail shot, it's super weird with the, the camera set up a little bit different today. I'm, I'm discombobulated. But with the A10 on top of the camera in landscape mode, you can get that same thing. But because I'm now in portrait mode, it would kick that A10 too far off to the side and it would start shooting the shadow kind of to the side of Kate and it would start creeping around. So because I was able to keep that light relatively on the same plane, we we're able to keep the shadows uh, relatively controlled. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna pull my camera over here for, or my laptop over here for a second without tripping my my lovely wife, hang on a second. Sorry, Kate. You okay. good? Yeah, I'm just, I know that I'm wrapping you with Why cables right now. There's cables about. Yeah, cables everywhere. <laughs> yep. Oh, and, and grip yeah, heads and all kinds of yeah. other good stuff. So um, let's pull up these three shots. Bop, bop, bop. So Actually, I'm gonna walk this you. is where, what, you, what you're going to start to see with the hard light shot. So actually, maybe I need to get rid of these two really quick just so. Fine. Now I just wanna be able to pull this up a little bit more. So if you see here with this loop, maybe I just need to zoom in, there we go. So with the hard light shot, this is that second shadow that I was telling you about, okay? And honestly, if I hadn't pointed it out or if we weren't looking for it, most people probably wouldn't have seen it, but it is something that's gonna be there. So if you start doing stuff with hard light fills, it's really more about shadow mitigation than it is gonna be anything else. It's really about trying to get that light right where you can because if uh, if you look also closely right here, um, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can. You're here. The brim of her hat is also right here in the shadows. Okay, but because the light's super subtle and the main light is doing a good job of of putting light where I want it, it's filling in those shadows, right? So it's keeping those shadows from being super pronounced, but because this part of the main light sh uh, is blocked by Kate's chin, uh, we're getting that second 
th that second shot is a little bit more pronounced. So that's just one of those things you have to pay attention to. Uh, I'm going to shoot Kate now uh, with the main light off so you can see just the fill lights and kind of see what I'm talking about with some of those um, extra shadows that are kind of creeping in. Again, this isn't a super heavy uh, topic, but it's just something if you decide that you want to mess around with uh, a harder soft fill, things that you're paying attention to. All right, Kate, you ready? Right. Cool. So let's get the main light turned off. So we're, the first shot we're gonna take, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the hard light fill. So you tell me when you're ready. Three, two, one. And yes, it's gonna be underexposed. It's fill light. It's not supposed to be the main exposure. So for anyone who's that might not be new to this and they're wondering why the shot's dark. Gotta build the shot. Gotta build the shot. Dynamite drop in, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So I yeah, I love right. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Sorry. It's all good. Three, two, one. So same thing with the soft fill. So now, did you blink on that one? No. It doesn't really matter because it's dark anyway. But you didn't blink. You're good. He You're good. Stoic. You're good. Yeah. All right. Cool. We have we have the shots. So we oh, are. Yeah. It's all good. I'm gonna come around. Tables. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I don't. To take you out with the cables first because there's a lot of stuff happening right now. So when you're talking about the actual two different fill lights, granted this one's a little bit darker, uh, but this is the things you have to start paying attention to. See, now you start to see these body lines uh, creep around the sides. These shadows will be there ever so subtly. So it's one of those things that, again, you just have to make sure that you understand what's happening and that you're paying really close attention to the fact that the hard light is going to pronounce or is going to introduce a second shadow. Uh, whereas then again, this is why, you know, you see so many people go to a soft box for your fill light because look at this. I mean, it doesn't really have any direction to it, which is nice. The shadows are nicely blended. And then once you introduce any other type of light, this just kind of fades away and just helps lift that contrast. So, you know, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to go with a soft fill over something like a hard fill. But if you decide that you like the, you, you want some extra pop, you want to try to keep the light snappy, uh, and you decide to go hard fill, or maybe you don't even have the option for a soft fill. Maybe you just have two lights and you're trying to figure out how to bring your contrast up. Just make sure you're paying attention to where the, the shadows fall with that, that fill light. Can I pop a question You up? can pop a question up. What's up? Okay, this is from F Stoppers. Can you read it from here? Oh, what does it say? It says the F, the F stops here. Yes. Oh, I like the name. That's really That's awesome. That's a really good um, I love the hard, hard combo, but having to reach in to fire would drive me crazy. Yeah, uh, what are the options for a hard fill to allow you to stay behind the camera? Um, I mean, honestly, I could probably duck down. The, the main thing that I'm doing is I'm not ducking down and looking into my eyepiece. If I was staying... Uh, could you hop in the shot really fast? Oh, I want yeah, to see if, see if my noggin pops in. The... Yeah, go to the two, just so they can kind of see. So if I was, if I was doing this, I'm just going to, let's just bring the whole, the whole image back up. We'll take the whole image again. So we go, if I was below the camera, like here, let's actually, let's do this really fast. I want them to see me and less of you. <laughs> so let's do that. So what I would probably do if you want to be behind the camera, sit on an Apple box, or have your light high enough that you can stand. So sit on the Apple box and the eye through the eye holder or the, the eye holder, the viewfinder. <laughs> We're doing it today. Here we go. Three, two, one. And now I'm not in the shot. Um, it looks nice. Uh, you can't see it because I took it away so you could see me sitting down like a buffoon. But you could do that. So. Again, you don't have to reach your, your hand in. I was just doing it because it keeps me from having to sit up and stand up a whole bunch of times while I'm walking around doing this stuff. But yeah, you could easily get down behind your camera. And then if not, if, you, if you're shooting at a higher level, you just raise the light up a little bit more. It's again, it's just making sure that you're paying attention to where those shadows fall. Any other questions? the question yeah i think that's good so cool far. so uh yeah thank you very much for the question f stops here uh but other than that it's a pre again it's not too incredibly intense as far as what you need to do to control it now when you start 
doing more creative stuff with your light. So this is, the hard fills are really, really cool because you can start getting really funky. So if you want to put the shadows where you want the shadows and you want certain things to be highlighted and certain things to go darker, that's where you can start to play with it. If it's more of like a standard portrait, you should probably just, uh, again, really pay attention to where those shadows fall. But once you start getting really creative and you start trying to you know make some funky art and stuff like that, like let the shadows fly, like put them right where you want them. And that's another really cool thing about hard light is that you can cut and shape the light in the places that you want it and keep it off the things that you don't want um, really, really easily. William, excuse me, William Morton was, could you put the hard fill and the soft fill side by side? Oh, you oh, put them up on the screen. Did we do the soft fill yet? Yeah, we did. We did. Oh, uh, so these are the fills side by side. If this is what you're, if this is what you're talking about on the images, these are the two fill lights side by side. So this is obviously the hard fill here on the left hand side, um, because and uh, apologies. I know it's super contrasty when it comes through the screen. It's not as contrasty for me. Um, but you can see with the hat brim here, and you can start to see the arm, the the shoulder line. And now you could you could change some of this by raising or lowering your light and getting that shadow where you want it and that kind of good stuff there. Whereas you, again, you start getting into something like right here with your soft box, with the soft fill, it's really, really easy to uh, make the light look like it doesn't even exist, right? It just kind of blends away, which is what most, what you want most of the time. So let's, and then I'm going to, just because I wasn't sure what you're asking, I'm gonna put both soft fill and hard fill lights up at the same time with the with the full image. So again, so this right here on the left, this is the soft fill image. So you can see here, and we're just gonna go to the next, sorry Kate, for the next zoom in. Um, but you can see here where we don't have any extra type shadows here, but right here, there's a little more, uh, there's that second shadow that we we're talking about. Again, if you're not necessarily looking for it, you probably wouldn't see it, especially if you keep the, the, the light placement right where you want it, but it is there and it's something that you have to pay attention to. Any other questions? Looks good so far. Yeah. Cool. So again, really, really light, uh, really easy thing to talk about. Uh, it's, again, it's just about, I think the main rule for anything hard light related is just making sure that you're paying attention to where your shadows fall. I think, uh, you know, the hard light scares people a lot and it's because of how easy it is. It's okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Little hat, little hat action. So hard light scares people because it's really, really easy to get sharp shadows where you don't want them. And I think if you approach hard light from the idea of I'm controlling my shadows more so than I'm controlling my light. So where are my shadows? That one will help you be, that is what helped me be a lot more successful with my, uh, my hard light portraiture. But if you're going to do that and play around with that saw or that hard fill, keep that in mind again. So I, I have shadows to control again from another light source. So just make sure you're paying attention to that stuff. And then when it comes to the soft box, oh my gosh, like they're so forgiving that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So any other questions before I sign off this back one? Good, yeah. Cool. So thank you all so much for hanging out with us. It was really, really fun. It was something that I wanted to jump into because I, I just heard somebody make a comment about never use hard fill light. Uh, and I don't think, in the world of photography that we should say never to anything, right? Because there's always some sort of a way that we can make something work, whether it be uh, for creative reasons or for just necessity, things that we, we may not have access to what we might need. Can we take the tools that we have and create cool images? Um, I saw something pop up. Anybody say anything before we roll? Cool. We're good to go. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Let me know if you have any other questions. You can feel free to DM me anytime. Uh, and we will see you next time on Geared Up. Peace out, everybody.